Well, good morning. Let's all stand up. You ready to bless the Lord? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your faithfulness. We thank you that by vir the virtue of the blood of Jesus, we can call you Father, Abba Father. Lord, we are close to you. Father, your heart is toward us, to prosper us, to bring us peace, and to provide everything that pertains to life and godliness. And Lord, I pray that your spirit just flow through this place. In Jesus' name, amen.
on this journey I get lost in my mistakes it looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength my story isn't over my story's just begun feel you won't define me that's what my father does feel you won't define me that's what my father does Your burdens down. Oh, oh, oh. You're in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door. It ain't welcome anymore. Oh, oh. You're in the Father's Arrival's not the end game The journey's where you are You never wanted perfect You just wanted my heart And the story isn't over If the story isn't good Failure's never final When the Father's in the room Failure's never final When the Father's in the room Burdens down, oh, oh, oh. you're in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door. It ain't welcome anymore. Oh, oh. you're in the Father's Come home, the helpless find hope. The love is on the move when the father's in the room. The doors fling wide and the dead come to life. The love is on the move when the father's in the room. The miracles take place and the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. find hope love is on the moon when the father's in the room prison doors cling wide the dead come to life love is breaking through when the father's in the room miracles take place cynical find faith love is breaking through when the father's in the room Strong those now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Oh, lay your burdens down. Oh, oh, we're in the father's house. Check your 
shame at the door It ain't welcome anymore I've lived stories that have proved your faithfulness I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend but There is beauty in what I can't understand but I believe you're the wonder-working God You're the wonder-working God all the miracles I've seen, too good to not believe. You're those we'll see, you're too good to not believe. I can't resurrect a man with my own hands. Glory to the only one who can. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, you're the wonder-working God. All the miracles I've seen cause you love. All the miracles we'll see, too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. And disappear. I've seen broken bodies whole Don't you tell me he can do it till health restored Don't you tell me he can do it Don't you tell me he can do it I've seen families reunited And prodigals return Don't you tell me he can do it Don't you tell me he can do it I've seen troubled souls Delivered, and addicts finally free Don't you tell me he can do it Don't you tell me he can do it We'll see cities and revival And salvation flood the streets Don't you tell me he can do it Don't you tell me he can do it We'll see his glory fill the nations the world has never seen. Don't you tell me he can do it, cause I know that he can. I believe you're the wonder-working God, you're the wonder-working God. All the miracles I've seen, too good to not believe. You're the wonder-working God. You heal because you love All the miracles we'll see Too good to not believe Too good to not believe Too good to not believe Too good to not believe, to not believe. And I believe You're the wonder-working God You're the wonder-working God all the miracles I've seen, too good to not believe. You're the wonder-working God, and you heal because you love. All the miracles we'll see, too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. Wow, happy Father's Day. Happy anniversary. 23 years. Oh, yeah, come on. Can somebody just give God some yay? <laughs> and you know, there's, 
There's those of you that have been here with us for 23 years and those that have been maybe just a little shorter. Some of you have been with us for about 15 minutes. But here's the thing. You're all part of the vision. You're all part of the ones that from the foundations of this church, we've been praying for you for 23 years. For those of you that are watching online, we've been praying and believing for you for 23 years. There are those of you that are in Africa, you're in Florida, you're in Virginia. Come on, you are in, you are in the Carolinas, you are in Maine, you're all over this country. And you're in Kona, Hawaii. David, we say hello in Kona, Hawaii. It's 5 o'clock in the morning there. But they get up, the YWAM, he has several of those that are the members of the YWAM in Kona, Hawaii, and they get up at 5 o'clock to join us with our service. Yeah. Hey, David. <laughs> and all of you in Hawaii. You know, have you ever known a secret and it was a surprise, and the excitement within you was just almost overwhelming. I remember my, my father's brother, and they were just little guys, and they, were, they went out to get their mother some dishes for Mother's Day. And um, Ray, my, my dad, was the oldest well, I was, it was his sister Mary Jo, the oldest, and my dad, and then their little brother Ray. And, and they went and they got their mother dishes. And listen, they, my dad was not raised with a lot of money. And so in order for them to get these dishes, it was a big deal. It was a sacrifice. It was something that my grandmother really loved and wanted. And my Uncle Ray was just a little guy, and they walked in, and they didn't even have a chance to wrap the gift. They didn't have a chance to do anything with it. He walked in, and he says, Mama, I'm so excited. I am not going to tell you that we just bought you some dishes. Isn't that just like a little guy? How many of you want to be children at heart today? How many of you want to be like a sponge, like a child that learns exponentially because they show up ready to learn? Come on, I'm, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited for what has been. I'm so excited for God's faithfulness. I'm so excited for right now, but I am excited for what this day represents and the launching. And the heart of the Father being turned to the children and the children to the Father. And you know what's about to take place in here is a fulfillment of that prophecy. So that everything in this entire area and we cover the entire earth because we come into agreement that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. We are in agreement with the fulfillment of that declaration. The heart of the Father being turned to the children and the children of the Father. Can we prophetically stand right now in the gap for what's about to take place in here <laughs> in just a very few, in just a very few days? I need some children. And I'm talking <laughs> From, I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm talking if, if you're the age that they just cut your cord and wiped you off and brought you to, to church. Or whatever your chronological age, you are a child of the Most High God. And I invite you down to the front. And I invite you to bathe this basketball court, this volleyball court, this meeting area of children with love. With love with love and perfect love cast out fear and your fear right now that has tried to torment you and separate you and sit you down and shut you up that fear come on has no place in the glory of a perfect love and so you know what it's too good not to believe some people would say it's too good to be true 
Some people would say, you know what, the ship has sailed. We just need a reset. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We are going to fulfill what we came here to do. We will turn with love the heart of the Father, the heart of the children back to the fathers. And the Father's heart's already turned to the children. That's why we say, let your countenance, let his face shine upon you. And those of you that are here this morning, I ask you, I invite you to worship beyond yourself. I ask you right now just to begin to thank him. Listen, right now is not the time to ask for anything because I promise your dream fulfilled comes in the gratitude. Let your mouth be filled with praise. And you say, and that all that is, is he satisfies my mouth with good things that my youth is renewed. Love him, worship him, bless him, glorify him. If you need a miracle right now, your miracle comes. It says that there's a miracle is nigh even in your mouth. <laughs> so when we say, Father, I love you. Father, thank you. Father, I bless you. Father, I give you glory. Father, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy that endures forever. And the suddenly... The suddenly, all through the word of God, the suddenlies were visited upon the human condition, upon the sons, upon the daughters, and upon those that didn't even know they were sons and daughters. Adam, Enoch. The day that Enoch was just, he walked so in the glory and presence of God that God says, just come on with up here with me. He says, just come with me. It's closer here to my house than it is to yours. That was a suddenly. And then Abram, who became Abraham, the breath of God that filled his body. And he walked and he built that, that place, that place where he met with God with the sacrifice and that incense, that censer burned between the, the, the pieces of the sacrifice that were laid out. And the gross darkness covered him and great fear covered him. But suddenly the covenant was cut. Come on, lift up your hands. You are covenant children that's been born by blood. Lift up your hands if you believe that. And those of you that are here for the first time or you're kind of new, I invite you to join with us because you're a part of this great vision. And then there was Isaac, the child of promise. The child of promise. <laughs> they came when it looked like it was almost too late, but the child of promise came right on time. And that child of promise went and dug his own wells. Come on. And that same anointing was upon him. And then there was Jacob. And Jacob, the deceiver, who wrestled with himself and with the God that loved him. <laughs> But suddenly, 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 God came to him and spoke to him, revealing to him the fulfillment of the promise. <laughs> and then there's Joseph. Joseph had a dream. Come on, lift up your hands if you've ever had a dream that you know was spoken by God, inspired by God. And those of you that have lived long enough to think that the dream, come on, the dream would never be fulfilled. Those of you that are just now receiving a dream, come on, lift up your hands into a love that says yes and amen. Here we go, huh? Joseph came out, and Joseph was the deliverer that would see that many, many, many would still live to perpetuate the dream of the heart of the Father. <laughs> you're all a part of this, by the way. This is all your story, just in case you're wondering. This is, you say, well, wait, oh, this is all about you. And then... Then comes Moses, the one who is prophesied that would deliver. 
and brings God's children out after 430 years, brings them out of bondage and brings them to the brink of the promised land and then he hands it over because he was taken and he hands him over. Come on, it's time for the baton to be shifted to Joshua and Caleb. <laughs> And Joshua and Caleb took a young, a young generation that had never held a weapon. They had never held an implement, a farming implement. Listen to me. They had never done anything for themselves. And yet God, through the leading of Joshua and Caleb, took a generation over and says, I've given you the land. It's yours. Just go in and take it and possess it. Joshua said this. He said, now this is it. Here it is. Happy Father's Day. Happy June the 19th, 2022. 100 years later, after William Seymour, come on, said, in 100 years, there's going to be an outpouring that is going to make what we are experiencing look small. And he passed away September the 28th, 2022, and he held the fire. And though it was just, listen to me, though it was just at that time, a smoldering flax within William Seymour. Do you hear me? Those of you that don't know who William Seymour is, go back a couple of weeks, listen to what I said in my, sermon, my message. The Word of God says, I will not put out a smoldering flax. Come on, those of you that think you ain't got nothing left but just a little bit left to just maybe blow on to keep it going, to keep you going. <laughs> and there was nothing left but a smoldering flax inside of William J. Seymour on September the 28th, 2022. You stand on the precipice of the hundred year prophecy being fulfilled. And there will be a people that will believe it. There will be a people that will receive it. There will be a people because God didn't put out the fire in William Seymour. There will be a people that believe that the fire, listen to me, the fire is not going to fall. It's going to come from within you. The fire's already fallen, folks. And now you're the keeper of the flame. You're the priest. You're the king. You're the one. Come on, lift up your hands. There's young people that have never understood the principle of sowing and weep, reaping in the word of God. I think weeping was the right word, but it's sowing and reaping in the word there's young people that have never picked up a weapon because they've ever had anything to fight for concerning the kingdom of heaven. And yet this is the generation right now that have never been to church. They're leaving by the droves. They don't know. Their parents are leaving. There's an apostate. There's a, there's a, a weeping. There's a tearing. There's a falling away. But yet right now, this is the generation that's about to know their God and about to do mighty exploits. And they're about to raise up and have an understanding. Listen, and we as the Joshuas and the Calebs, we walk by their side and we say, come on, in love, not in, not in fear, not in fighting, not in, you know, we're, we're right, you're wrong. Come on, folks. It's time that the body of Christ who has been in pieces for too long is finally remembered. Come on, lift up your hands. You're being healed right now. If you'll just worship God all over this place, if you'll just thank him that you have not been left out, if you'll just thank him and say to him, I want to know you. Say it out of your mouth right now. I want to know you. I'm talking to your Father God. I want to know you. And it says in the fellowship of the suffering and in the power of the resurrection, you come to the place where Pastor John says, I'm all in. 
And I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be shoulder checked. I know what it's like to be rejected. I know what it's like to be despised. Come on. So I already know that. You already know that. But if you still love him, if he looks to you and he turns to you like he did to Jesus, did to the 12 and said, you know what, you're going to leave me too. <laughs> and Peter, Lord, where are we going to go? You're the one who holds the words of eternal life. So guess what? It's time now to know him in the power of his resurrection. It's time, once and for all, to realize that just as every one of those patriarchs that I mentioned, there was a suddenly that happened to each and every one of them. There was a suddenly that marked their life forever. And as they wandered around aimlessly, as they were thrown in prison, Come on, all the things that they endured as they left their home and they went to a place that they knew not of. All of the things, all of the things. Yet there was a suddenly and there was a day. And when Joshua and Caleb went over, they looked at that generation and they said, keep your eyes on the presence of the Lord. Listen, because we've not been this way before. How many of you, come on, wave your hand if you really believe that we've not been this way before, but that there's a place that we are leading and that God is leading us. Wave to me if you believe that. If there's a place, see, that we've not even seen, and guess what it says? Your eye has not seen and your ear has not heard, and neither has it even entered into your heart the things that God has prepared for you only for one reason and one reason alone. And it's not because you're a Bible scholar, and it's not because you've, you've actually, uh-oh, sometimes I've had doubt or unbelief. All of these things that have, that have been the encompassing, the encompassing of your entire life, he says, I will show you things that hasn't entered into your eyes, your ears, or your heart just because you love me. Just because you love me. Can we just tell him we love him now? Justin, lead us in I love you, Lord. Lead us in I love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Come on. You're being healed right now. If you're sick in your body, just tell him you love him. Let his presence, his power, Take, just come over you right now and be made every way whole. Be inhabited with his presence as you tell him that you love him right now and be whole. Be whole. We love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I live my voice. to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy.
sing in the spirit. You guys lead it up here. Melissa, Justin, lead it up here. Janine, lead it up here. Come on. Just begin to sing in the spirit. Oh, la da da Oh, hallelujah. Oh, body raise your hand if you want healing only raise your hand if you'd like us to pray for you for healing you're still in pain in your body anybody out here because they're about to turn around and you need healing right here those of you that are up here just go to them right now go to them go to them and just get them get them healed thank you father we love you Jesus we love you Jesus hallelujah we love you, Jesus. How many of you know Jesus loves you? Let me see your hands. Jesus loves you. You know Jesus loves you right where you are. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We bless you. We glorify the Father as the Father glorifies the Son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you in here felt his power in your body? Let me see your hands. How many of you came in here with a situation? Put your hands down. How many of you came in here with a situation and you felt it leave? Let me see your hands. Okay. How many of you felt healing come into your body? Let me see your hands. Okay. All over this sanctuary. All over this gymnasium. <laughs> All over this metal building barn, people have been healed. People have, people have been saved. Come on, let's call on the name of the Lord right now. Father, I thank you. Say it with me. But say it with us. Start with, Father, I thank you for giving us your best. Jesus, I thank you for coming to earth. I thank you for showing us the Father. And I thank you for showing us the way, the truth, and the life. I thank you for giving your life that I would have life. I thank you right now that you are my Savior and my Lord. I change my mind. I turn around and I thank you that I have been forgiven. I have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. And I thank you that the water of your word 
has redeemed me, has washed me, has healed me, and has set my feet upon the rock of revelation knowledge that everything I do from this point forward is launched from that place of revelation love in Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. Come on, give him praise. Lord, we love you and we bless you. New beginnings on the day of new beginnings. Hallelujah. Let's turn the lights up. Wow, there you go. Get adjusted to that. Look around and actually see who you're sitting next to. Now's a good time to greet everybody in Jesus. Hey, if it's your first time to be with us at Living Faith Outreach, we have a gift that we'd like to give you. I hope that all of our dads in here receive their gift from this house. We say, Happy Father's Day! Woo! Come on! Give them a great big hand. Happy Father's Day. And Happy Father's Day to the great grand poobah of this house. We love you, Pastor John. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> if it's your first time with us, could you raise your hand and we'll just give, we have a gift that we'd like to give you first time. I think you're over here. I think, yeah, right here. Don't be afraid. I, I know I'm a little loud, but I'm not going to pull you up here. We don't want to miss <laughs> anybody. Kevin, it's good to see you. Love you. And let's see, what else? Did we, did we get everybody? That's the one cool thing about Jesus. Jesus never missed anybody. He looked at Zacchaeus. He said, I see you. I recognize you. I know you. I love you. And I'm about to change your life. That's the Gina Gilligan paraphrase version. <laughs> Listen, it's time now. Guest, we can't wait to meet you. Hopefully you'll come and, and uh, we love, John and I would love to meet you. But right now, family, it's time to jump back up. If you've taken your shoes off, you don't have to put them back on. Jump up, let's greet each other, find our guests. Come on, those of you leaders of the house, find our guests and go meet them, greet them, tell them they are loved and welcome them in this house. Good. 
not hold you the veil torn before you you silence the boast of sin and grace the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no Let's go ahead and find a seat. We're going to we're going to honor the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. You know, the the origin of Father's Day it's really in 1909 a woman by the name of Sonora Dodd she was in a Mother's Day service and she thought, "What a, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a special day for fathers?" And so in 1910 the first celebration of Father's Day was initiated, but in 1924, President Calvin Coolidge put into law that Father's Day would be celebrated the third Sunday in June. And so for that, so in two more years, I guess, we'll officially celebrate the 100th anniversary of Father's Day in our country. Isn't that an interesting little information? How many did not know that? Okay, now you know it. Amen. Hey, we want to welcome everybody. Welcome everybody that's online. I hope fathers have a great day today. I hope you moms and kids have something in store for them that's real good. Um, but we're going to honor the Lord with our tithe and our substance right now. So if you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. I want to thank everybody that was able to sow into our anniversary offering uh, this month. We appreciate that. You still have time to do that if you like. So, Father, we love you and praise you. We're just so grateful for the privilege to sow into your kingdom. So, Father, we're asking you to receive this offering right now. We ask you to bless it. We ask you to multiply it. We're so grateful that you meet all of our needs with enough left over to bless people. And everybody said, amen. 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 All right, we have a few announcements this week. Things are starting to pick up, and it's a good thing. So we've got our women's recovery meeting next door in the connection room at 7 p.m. You can see Miss Kathleen if you have any questions about that. 
Um, we have our food pantry this Tuesday. It's a, it's a drive through service still, so if you'd like to volunteer, our volunteers meet at 1.30 in the kids' area to prepare the bags, and if you have any questions, you can see Mike or Betty shout for that. And Ms. Trudy is meeting this Thursday in the lobby for Translating God at 6.30, so she's here. If you have any questions, you can see her for that. Um, next Sunday after church, besides having cake, we go, cake, woo! Um, we are having a special lunch for the Kainos generation, which is our 6th grade through 12th grade, and anyone up to age 44-ish. Okay, we did that for the Wisdom Walkers. We want to do that for the younger generation as well. So we have a sign-up on the back table. Now, if you have a child that is in the youth group that wants to come to this lunch, but you're older than that, Please come, sign up, okay? We're trying to get everyone involved with what's going on, and we all want us to be on the same page. So that's one reason we're doing this. But if you don't sign up, I can't prepare for you. So if you think you might sign up, if you've got kids that need child care, our children's pastors, our nursery pastors are on board and willing to help us out. Please sign up so that we can prepare for you. We're excited about what God's doing, and we want everyone involved. We want you to feel like you are a part. We want you to get plugged in. That's why we're doing these things. This is going to be right after the service, next door in the fellowship room. And also next Sunday evening at 6, the Wisdom Walkers are meeting again in the new room. This room is getting put to some good use. So if you have any questions, you can see the pollards about that. So y'all be blessed as you give. It's all ready, John? Already good? All right. All right. Very, very good. How many like that new song that Justin's worked up? He's, he's too good to not believe. You know, I listened to that, man. I got so excited, so I asked him to work it up. That's what he does is the edited version because the, the original, whoever came out with that originally, it's exactly 15 minutes long. So for just for logistic purposes, he's edited it down a little bit so we can we can play more than one song on a Sunday morning. But uh, the reason I like it, too, is that it's exactly 15 minutes. Oh, look at this. Wow. Nice. Thank you so much. For those of you that are online, you can see they've got signs up. We love our pastors. They, they did it just the way we told them to, you know, just spread out, you know, just like that. And, uh, oh, oh, oh. Hey, um, you know, I was going out, I was leaving today, uh, going out the door. I got to my car, I went back in the house, I said, Gina, what is 23? What's the number 23 mean? Yes. I tried to tell the men earlier and bungled it. So, it means change, progress, and growth. It means change, progress, and growth. How many think you might be ready for a little bit of change? Raise your hand. How many would like a little bit more progress in your life? Raise your hand. How many definitely need a little more growth? I know I do. Amen. Amen. We're always growing. We're always learning. We're always in school. And I mean the school of the Spirit. The knowledge and the information is inexhaustible. We just to get a little, we just get to uh, get a little bit more every single day. And I just, uh, and with that in mind, this isn't even part of my message, so don't count it towards my time, all right? But I was just looking in uh, John chapter 16, verse 13. It says, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. 
full and complete truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father, the message regarding the Son. And he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. He will glorify and honor me because he, the Holy Spirit, will take from what is mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Because of this, I said that he, the Spirit, will take from what is mine and will reveal it to you. Now, that's pretty amazing. Everything that, that Jesus has is from the Father, and everything that the Father gave him, he discloses to us. What a powerful, perfect union that is. Because the Spirit of God, it says, will only speak what the Father what the Father's heart is. And I just got to thinking, you know, uh, all of that relationship, the melding of that relationship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it is such a powerful union. It's not just, it's not, it's not an association. It's not a business. It's not something that you could even tangibly put your hands on, but it's a, it's a relationship where the very attributes, resources, wisdom, everything that God is has been deposited in us through that relationship. Malachi 4, 6, the last, last prophecy in the Old Testament, it says, for the hearts of the fathers are going to be turned towards the children and the children's hearts are being turned towards the fathers. Everything about the kingdom has to do with relationship. And so that last prophecy has to do with a healing of relationships. When you get outside of the word relationship, you go outside of the power of the kingdom. The kingdom is not formulas. The kingdom is not ideas. The kingdom is not even principles, although principles are involved in living in the kingdom. But the whole thing about the kingdom is, is birth by relationship. Amen? And so, you know, you think about that. You, and I wrote this down. You'd have to be out of your mind to abandon that notion or thought about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit living you know, on the inside of you. You'd have to be out of your mind. You know, we'll, we'll say that in a lot of times a derogatory sense, but just think about it, said, just out of your mind. How many know that you have the mind of Christ? How many will be honest and say you've had a brain cramp every once in a while and you stop thinking the thoughts of God about you, about others? And so for that particular sense right there, you were out of the designed mind that God has for you. How many know that those times are becoming few and far between? Because how many of you know that he's better than you think? Right? If he's better than you think, guess what? We need to change our thinking. Amen? And our thinking is being changed. Our mind, we've heard it for the longest of times right now that the target of God is the renewed mind for our life so that we can prove the acceptable and perfect will of God. The renewed mind gives, uh, gives a concept for our faith to operate in. You know? And so that renewed mind is always his, his target in our life. And so we're learning. And I thought, you know, what does the word repent mean? The word repent means to change your mind. How many have ever had change your mind and go in a different direction of where you were going? Well, that's repentance. Oh, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not something we should try to avoid. It's something that we welcome into our life because Jesus said, hey, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I've come and I brought my kingdom with me. 
So I need you to think the way I think. I want to I want to invite you into this. You know, some people have they repent enough to get into the kingdom. They just don't repent enough to see the kingdom. And God wants us to see things. There's a whole world out there that he still wants us to see. It's inexhaustible. It never ends. We're always in school. We're always learning. Amen. And so it's not and it's not just abandoning Bad thoughts, so well, I'm thinking wrong, now i got to change my way. That's all part of it. But you know what it also includes? It includes thinking even greater than the good things you're thinking now. It means taking the good things that you have and taking it to another level. How many like that better than the other one? You know? So often we think, oh, i got to change the way I think. Oh, Lord, forgive me for that thought and, and all that. You know, you know, thoughts will come, you know. It's, not that, there's, it's just that we don't want those things to settle and become a stronghold in our life. And so we see that it exalts itself against God's knowledge, so we cast those thoughts down. We take them captive in the name of Jesus on purpose. We do it on purpose. And as I was, I, I think I said this Wednesday night, Gina's been teaching us so good about getting our mind in line with, with, with God and his word and his purpose for our life. But the more we do this, and I just, I just know that as you're, as you're going about your business and you're doing your everyday things, you know that God speaks to you in your everyday life in the good times and the bad times? Do you realize, you know, when he told, when all the disciples were leaving him because he just preached this wonderful message that you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And nobody, nobody could wrap their brain around it. And so all the disciples, they started leaving, and then he looked at his, all of the other followers. So are you going to leave too? Peter, you know, Peter had his moments. Both sides. You know, when he wasn't cutting people's ears off with a sword, he really had some good thoughts every once in a while. And he said, where are we going to go? You and only you had the words to eternal life. Amen. Jesus, you know, in John chapter 15, he says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you'll ask what you want. In the in the passion translation of that voice of the voice uh, of that ver, of that verse, it says, "If you have life union with me, if you're in life union with me, man, this isn't just a thought. This is a relationship that we are in life union." Every day, 24-7, never goes away, not reserved for Sunday morning, not reserved for Wednesday night, not reserved for the women's meeting or the men's meeting. And, you know, I won't do it. I'm not going to do it. I won't do it. I am not going to say that we edge the women out again. I'm not going to do it. I think God's allowing that just to encourage us men. You know, yeah, happy Father's Day. You know, men, they've been beating you so much for all these years, outnumbering you, that I'm going to give you a little grace right now. And so we're just going to bask in it while we can. I just think it's really somewhat of a prophetic thing that the hearts of the fathers being turned towards the children, that, that relationship thing is, is just starting to grow. Amen? Now, I got sidetracked because I had to get that in. But this life union that Jesus, if you abide. You know, I heard someone say this. I thought it was pretty interesting. You know, you don't have to learn how to abide. Just Abide. Just abide. Because when you abide from the abiding in the process of abiding, you'll learn what you need to do as the process goes on. So whether you just got saved and you said, what do I do? Should I read my Bible? Yeah, that's good. Should I be around fellow other Christians? Yeah, that's a great, great thing. You've started abiding right there. And as you continue in that, you'll keep learning as you go along. You know? 
I got a coach sitting in here, and you know, I, you know, he'll, he'll tell you, and I'll tell you too. You know, you don't learn to get out on the practice field. You just get out on the practice field. And you spend the hours and the years and you do all of that stuff. You get out there and in the process of just getting out there on the practice field, you learn some things along the way. You know? Is that a pretty simple way, a simple concept of, of just learning to abide? So when you abide, when you have that life union, I'll take you right where you're at, right at the place you have, right, and I love you right where you're at right now, but I love you enough not to let you stay the way you are right now. And aren't you glad for that? Amen. And so it's this great process. And, and this had nothing really to do with my message that I was going to preach today. But that's a pretty good message right there. The abiding power. Oh, man. Father's Day. You know, we celebrate earthly fathers today, you know, in our nation. But in actuality, Father's Day is every day. And it affects women. It affects men. It affects children. It affects everything, everything and everyone on this planet right now. So every day is a Father's Day. And when you, when you consider this, then when Jesus came... We know that Jesus came to die for our sins, correct? We know that he came to make us righteous through the shedding of his blood. We know he came to initiate the existence and the restoration of the kingdom. He came to set the captive free, to destroy the works of darkness by doing good, amen? But all of those things there, they're all true and they're all powerful. But I think they're all subsets to the main reason that Jesus came was this. He came to reveal his Father. And it's very important for us to know that because there are people in here, because of what you've experienced in your own personal lives, your concept of fatherhood may be skewed a little bit. And so when you hear someone talking about a loving father, hold this time out. I have an exper experience that on the earthly realm, my experiences don't, don't say that because of my, of my life and what. Now, some of us here, we've had a great home experience. Grow, uh, uh, wonderful mothers and fathers in, in the homes. They've trained you up in the way that you should go and, and you haven't departed from it. Wonderful! But you know, there's a lot of people that haven't. But Jesus, whether you've had a good life or whether you've had a life that was maybe full of abuse and neglect and rejection, we have a perfect Father in heaven. And you're able to start again fresh. You're able to experience this. I heard someone say that all of the issues facing our life today, everything we're seeing in our world today, the, the root of it all would be, could be, fatherlessness. We have a global identity crisis. There's a global identity crisis. People don't know who they are. And because of this lack of fatherlessness, just the statistics can tell us, 90% of American inmates are men. 75% of all inmates grew up without a father. 63% of youth suicides from fatherless homes. 90% of homeless runaways, fatherless homes. 80% of rapists, fatherless homes. 72% of dropouts, fatherless homes. And fatherlessness, it, it just, it's a, it drives violence in our society because we've got young men that don't know how to channel their aggression properly. You know, there's, a, there's, an etern, there's an internal aggression that's of God, but it's the, the aggression that we have is supposed to be for protection and providing. That's what the original intent of aggression in man was meant for. But now we've got a, whole, we've got a generation of young people who don't know how to channel their aggression. And now we're seeing things that are just unheard of. And I believe the root cause of this is that this globally and especially in our country, 
this fatherlessness. That's what God's put on our heart. You know, the word says that he's a father to the fatherless. So our heart in the next, in the coming days is to draw our kids in. Maybe they don't have that father uh, presence in the home. And maybe becoming a father or an example to them. You know, it's funny, there, there's a story that sort of relates to all of this, and it has to do with the, it has to do with the animal kingdom. But I think it really, I think it speaks volumes to God's original intent. There's a national park in South Africa called the Kruger National Park. And in that park, they were, uh, the, 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 ele- the African elephant was an endangered species, and so they were trying to breed the elephant to where it would, you know, have a strong comeback. And it had a real strong comeback. As a matter of fact, it was overtaking the park. It was overtaking the park, so they had to do something, so they decided to move some of these elephants to another park. And so they constructed a harness, and they lifted these elephants up, and they deposited them over into another park right there. But they noticed something that after about five months, the white rhino, who was also an endangered species, the white rhino in this park, they found that they were being killed, and they couldn't understand why. And they started looking into it, and they found this out, that those elephants that were brought over there, the the elephants were goring the white rhinos. They were goring them and killing them. But see, what had happened, when they tried to lift the bull elephants, the male male elephants over there, the straps weren't big enough, so the straps broke. And so they just, well, we'll just put the young ones over there. So they constructed a stronger harness, And they moved those bull elephants over there, and the killing stopped. The killing stopped. Why? Because those younger elephants were walking around and doing what the older elephants were doing. The older elephants were showing them how to live. The older older, uh, elephants, the fathers, were showing the younger ones So without that father presence right there, their aggression was misplaced and they were doing things they weren't supposed to do. Isn't that something? I really believe that, you know, God in his infinite wisdom and in his original design for things, I don't believe that that was, I believe that just just transposes over into his original intent for man. Amen? Amen. But once that presence was there, the killing stopped, and they started acting the way they were supposed to act. Amen? Thank God for fathers. You know, motherhood, we don't even have to talk about that. That's a given. So this is, today's not going to be a balanced message, if you will. Mothers, we can't say enough good about motherhood. motherhood. But you know what? There is something about that we can't dismiss, we can't ignore it. And we need to address it. That's why Jesus, you know, he came, and he came to reveal the Father. You know, in in John John 10, 30, he says, I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said that in John chapter 14 when he was talking to Philip. Philip Philip was a little bit. He said, you know, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And then Philip goes, show us the Father. (laughs) Philip. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Show us the Father. How many have to hear things more than one time? And, you know, I know I do, amen. So he's trying to get something across to Philip. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus said this, I only do what I see the Father do and say what I hear the Father say. John 5, 19. Okay. So everything that Jesus did, so when he healed blind Bartimaeus, he did what any father would do for a child that was in that position right there. With the woman that was in the issue of blood, and he, you know, don't you love that story? All those people, the, the law says you need to stone this woman. You know, what about the man? Where is he in this whole thing? So, so, so they're, they're going to stone this woman, and Jesus just kneels down, and he writes something in the sand. We don't know what he wrote. Just whatever the last sermon you had on, I believe that one, all right? But we don't know what he wrote there in the sand. But we do know this, 
that those people that were in bondage to the condemnation of the law, they were under such, such conviction of the own sinfulness in their life that wherever he did, because Jesus poured out, there was a great encounter of grace right there, and they couldn't handle it, and so they just split. They just split. They took off because at that moment right there, he was having a father-daughter moment with this woman because of his love. Amen? Jesus was doing what the Father, anything you want to know, Jesus is perfect theology, and anything you want to know about the Father or want to know about God, you will find in the person of Jesus. And outside of that, you have a right to question anything. So you want to, you, you want to know about the Father, just look at the life of Jesus. Just look at what he did. He accepted people. He would just, you know what? Sinners love to be around him. Zacchaeus, Think about this. Zacchaeus wanted to be with him so bad, and Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I have need of you. I want to go to your house and have lunch today. Zacchaeus, who had a bankroll, his, he had money in the bank that was dirty, and he wanted to be with God. You know, you would think that someone had all that had money in there that was taken, taken you know, in a wrong manner, and was hurtful to people in doing it, you think he'd want to stay away from God. No, he wanted to be with God. The woman that crashed the party and washed Jesus' feet with, a, uh, with her tears and, 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 and wiped it with her hair. Oh, man, the religious folk in that room, they were, man, they was pushing everybody's button in that room. She crashed the party. You ain't supposed to be here. I think they would just give her a little side hug and send her on her way. Amen. That these people, they wanted to be with Jesus. Can we believe, so can I challenge you to believe something in the days ahead? Can we believe that people that don't know God would want to be with us? Well, thank you for those two claps. Man, that was underwhelming your response right there. Do you think that we could believe that the people that don't know God would want to be with us? All right. Because it says, as he is, so are we in this world. And so what, God, what I believe God wants us to do, he wants us to walk around see, and let people see what a loving father is like by the way we conduct ourselves in this world. Amen. Amen. I just, I wrote this down in my notes. I thought it was sort of cool. I hope you do too. Um, I just wrote this down. This is just an interesting thought. If we're going to quit on something or someone, the question is this. Who is going to fill the void of your departure? Is that pretty good? All right, I'm going to say it again. All right. If you're going to quit on something or someone, who's going to fill the void of your departure? Have you recruited your replacement yet? Also, here's another, it's got two parts to it. If you give up on you, how many will miss out on your gifting? See, we, we've got to believe that our life counts. You know, we've got to, we're sort of past the point of no return right now. We really don't have an option to quit because so many other people are involved with your quitting. You know, even when I got, you know, when I decided to leave coaching and come over and work at Livingstone's Church, I had resigned, but I felt the need, since I was leaving that place right there, I felt the need to recruit that summer and not leave the new coach in a bind. I could have left, oh, I'm officially out of here, but I recruited unpaid that summer, and I told my pastor, I said, I can't come on until, I can't come on until the fall. I got to recruit. I don't want to leave the guy in a bind. You didn't know that? Thanks. 
I'm pretty sure I said it here while I was preaching, so that's not a good, that's not a good, you, you just, you weren't paying attention. I, anyway. No, but I decided, you know, I'm going to, I felt, I felt it was only, only the right thing to do. But here's the thing, you don't even, that, that point's not even important because you ain't quitting and you ain't going nowhere. Amen. We're going to stay put right now. We're going to do what God's called us to do. We're going to be who he's called us to be. We're going to have a greater understanding of our true identity of who we are and whose we are because your identity determines your function in life. And no matter what your vocation is, no matter what your job is, this, we never abandon this presence, this life union that we carry everywhere we go. So Jesus carried, Jesus never stepped out of character. He never stepped out of character one time in all of his dealings with people. You know? If you quit on that honorary boss, who's going to minister to him? What if God's got you in there for such a time as this, and you're the one that he designed to be there for this rascal, who is a rascal in every sense of the word, but how many know that God wants us to minister to rascals? Thank you again for that underwhelming response. <laughs> I know you're just thinking, right? Hmm. Is this helping anybody today? So, when we, when we look at this, you know, in John chapter 17, you know, Jesus, John 17 is actually the Lord's prayer, you know. Because Jesus was actually praying this prayer, you know, when we say the other, the Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, it's really not a prayer that Jesus prayed because he says, forgive us our trespasses. We know Jesus didn't need to be forgiven because he was the spotless lamb. He was just giving us a model to follow. John 17 is the actual Lord's prayer. It's an actual prayer that Jesus prayed. But in this prayer, he gives an account for his life. He says, I've made manifest your name. I declared, I declared your word. I performed your works. So we can infer by that, when he fed the multitudes, he was showing what the Father was like. Woo! Isn't that good? Psalm 67. I'm going to read to you real quick. Psalm 67. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all nations. God be merciful unto us and bless us. You know what? It's a shame that the church in their selfish understanding of humility would say, I don't want to be blessed. It's really selfish when you think about it because in this prayer, it says, Lord, shine your face upon us, be gracious unto us, and bless us because if that doesn't happen, if your face doesn't shine on me and your blessing doesn't come my way, Nobody else is going to know what you're like. That's what it says. So this religious humility, oh, I don't want to, uh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I don't want the blessing of God. I'll use all the blessing of God I can handle. Spirit, soul, body, you know, you, you want, God wants us to have it because I purpose in my heart, I'll use it for, I'll use it for good. I'll use it to give him glory. I'll use him to give, it, huh, give him honor. We need all the resources He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, all things. You know why he's given us all things? Because we need it to fulfill the assignment. You know, we talked about, we're talking about opening this place up for kids, and now I've got, got businessmen handing, just coming up and handing me money. I had a businessman come up and hand me five $100 bills the other day. Five $100 bills, you know, just, just handing it to me. And my thought to that was, we're not, you know, it's really funny. For the first time ever, I've made this known that we'd like to get businesses to help us to do this. And, 
And uh, I've never done that in all my years of ministry. But you know what? There's people out there that want to help. And we're not doing it for nefarious purposes. We're not doing it. We're doing it solely so we can reach kids and minister to kids and, and, and bring them in. But I just thought, I just, you know, we need the blessing of God in our life. That's what, that's what prosperity is, having your needs met with enough to left over to bless other people. Amen. And so I just thought, though, um, another, in, that, in that particular psalm, it's really saying this, Lord, I need you to have such a strong impact on my life that when they see how you are impacting my life, other people will know what you're like. He says, let your countenance shine on me. I've said this before. Maybe you remember. Maybe you don't. But the joy center of an infant, the joy center of their brain is trained by looking on the countenance of their caretaker. That's just science. That's just a... So when, a, when, when you're in that baby's face... And you're doing all the hoo goo goo ga ga oh, you're such a pretty little thing. And you're making all these noises and all these faces and all that stuff. That everybody looking at you and you don't care what anybody else is thinking because you just, you're just having the greatest time. The joy center of that child's brain is being trained. So wouldn't it make sense that we would look upon the face of our father, look upon the face of our father who's all loving and all kind and all accepting and he's absolutely crazy about you. He loves you. He's better than we think he is. So because of that, we're going to change the way we think. And we're going to think some higher thoughts and get rid of the negative things that have nothing to do with, with him and his thoughts towards us. How many times have you heard this in this place? I can't afford to have a thought in my head about me that God doesn't have in his head about me. Amen. Amen. He's not mad at me. He's not upset with me. He doesn't reject me. He doesn't make me feel bad. He doesn't make me feel like I'm wanting. No, he's a loving father. And you come up to me and say, just my, my son, my natural son. You came up to you've come up if you come up to me and say, ah, your son ain't he ain't he ain't all that good. He ain't gonna make it. Man, we, the meeting's gonna be on. Hello? <laughs> and I would say, have you lost your mind? You've apparently lost your mind. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to get it back right now. You know, that's how God thinks about you. You know, people saying stuff about you and you just think, my goodness, a loving father. Remember, everything that Jesus did was an exact representation of the father's heart. So think about that next time. You know, think about that when we leave here today and, you know, these people bless their heart. Have, have anybody ever tried the bless your heart thing that I tried, as I told you a few weeks ago? So those people that cut you off just, the other, just yesterday. Someone cut across the lane in front of us. And Gina said to me, who's he, John? Ah, uh, he's the winner, honey. He's the winner, you know. And we yeah, God bless you. God bless you. We cheer for you. Don't raise your hand, but how many of you have taken a response like that? Last time someone, next time someone, last time someone cut you off. He's the winner. Oh, bless your heart. It's just good practice. Amen. This is my cue. I need to close right here. It's Father's Day. We need to get you out of here and get you out in the restaurant. Amen. 
Y'all following this? Father God, you got to do a work in me. This is what we should be praying. Say this after me. Father God, you have to do a deep work in me. You have to bless me. You have to let your face shine upon me. Because if you don't, people are not going to know what you're like. And I want them to know what you're like. Amen. How many, how many received that prayer right there? Good. Then my work is done for the day. One more challenge. How many of you would like to, how many of you would like to have people, people that don't know the Lord be drawn to you and want to be around you? You know what the problem of the church has done, though? The problem with the church is that when we act kind and merciful towards these people, they think we condone their sin. And so because of that, the church will back off and disassociate the religious church. Amen? How many don't want to get mixed up in that, that bunch? Dick Mills, great general of the faith, guy that I highly respect. only met him one time. He's in heaven now. But I remember the one time I didn't meet him. And I remember taking him back to the hotel, and he didn't know me from anybody. He says, John, tell me about your life. Tell me about your life. This guy's a big dog. He's a big, big, big-time preacher and just wanted to know about me, what I'm going through. I've been in the ministry about 10 minutes. You know, but he took the time and wanted to know about me, what's going on in my life. And then he told me a story about this church he, he would go to, and it happened to be in Houston. And he says, you know, they asked me to come in, but you know what they said? He said, yeah, we're gonna, we want you to come in, because, and, and then we're not going to advertise it, because when we advertise it, all the outside people come in and get all the good seats. And he said, I never went back. And he said, we're going to give you a good offering. But we're just going to make it a closed meeting. Because we, we, we just, and, and, and oh, we're going to give you that. And he, it was a big offering they were going to give him. He says, I don't want your money. And I'm never coming back to your church. Can we throw out the net a little further? Can we reach some people that the world would say are unreachable, even if the church would say they're unreachable? Is it all right that we do that? How many willing to do it? we're going to end with this. I want you to give that word, if you don't mind. And then we're going to close. Is it on? Can you hear me? Volume, talk louder. I'm learning, Gina. <laughs> I'm going to come alongside him. Because even though it was directed at him... You guys are one. <laughs> so early in the service, the Lord dropped this in my spirit, and I asked the pastor's permission to share this, because it's about him and the vision God's given him, but I also thought it would benefit those who are going to come alongside of him in the vision that God's given him. And thank you, Pastor, for trusting the Jesus in me, because these pastors have watched me fumble and stumble through the prophetic for a lot of years. And so I am grateful that they've endured that. And at the same time, I hope it's been of some benefit. But I felt the Lord drop this in my spirit. The scripture verse is Psalm 10, 14. And it says, even though this is talking about God, God is saying this about you. The helpless commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. He is anointing and deputizing you to anoint and deputize others to help the fatherless. So those of you that are in the Translating God class, take note, we'll talk more about this on Thursday, but take note that there is a proper way, a protocol that you follow when you're moving in the gifts of the Spirit.
Thank, Thank you, Trudy. You. Thank you so much. I received that. Now, let me ask you something as we close. I really believe this because God's no respecter of persons, what he does for one. I believe you can take that and receive that word for yourself. I receive it in the name of Jesus. I just believe you can, you know? So if that registers in your spirit, grab it. Grab it. I know where I receive it, you know? I really believe we're going to see miraculous things take place in the realm of relationships with parents and kids, a reuniting families being joined uh, together again. But it's just that... Um, you know, she said that uh, you would deputize people to be able to have that same love and lead for the fatherless. Are you ready to deputize us? All right, y'all stand to your feet. <laughs> Raise your right hand. <laughs> Why not? In the name of Jesus, I deputize you. I, we're going to send you out as a posse to go out after these young people, these fatherless, these ones that need, that need the love and attention of a loving father and you're going to you're going to export it to them you're going to it's going to ooze out of you easily in the name of Jesus so we just thank you and praise you for that Lord God in Jesus name i say may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you be gracious unto you may the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace happy father's day yeah.